Welcome everybody to the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting Tuesday, February 11th, 2020. And I will start with roll call on the left. Cassie Mr. Harris. Jared Porter. Sean Peterson. Carla Vestrata. Roz Chivik. Brian Bright. Mary Ann Chimati. Sonny Chapman. Alright. Um, appointing alternates. Um, Jared for John and Kathy for Lindsay. Um, opening the public hearing, AZ 2019-1620, continuation of Peter Higgins requesting special permit for gravel excavation on property located at 1327 Norwich Road. This application has been withdrawn. So moving on to item B. Z 2019-1674, continuation of Whitney Easton, requesting a special permit for an accessory apartment on property located at 135 School Street, Central Village, Map 1CV, Block 86, Lot 21, C2 Zoning District. Do we have anyone speaking for the applicant? I don't see Whitney here tonight. Um, we did go over a parking plan. We were, the only thing we're waiting for is a parking plan. We did come up with eight parking spaces. So now uh, conforms our regulations. Okay. This is a public hearing. Was there anyone here to speak um, or have a comment or question about the um, special permit for the accessory apartment in Central Village? Okay. Hearing none and no other comment from staff, we can close the public hearing. I have a motion to close the public hearing. I have a motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Roz. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Public hearing is closed. Moving on to item C, Z 2019-1681, continuation of Plainfield Materials, LLC, requesting a special permit for gravel screening, processing, and crushing on property located at 113 Plainfield Pike Plainfield, map 17, block 36, lots 68 and 68A, Industrial One Zoning District. Good evening, I'm Attorney William McCoy. Um, the address is 736 Norwich, and I'm in the current five hundred and fifty eight for the applicant. We'll be tonight as the Um You may recall from the past meeting that um, there were a couple of items that we were going to address tonight. One of them uh, related to acoustical, uh, I'm sorry, acoustical uh, testing by an independent firm um, that has been accomplished, a copy of which has been provided to staff. And Mr. Kiba will walk through that with you as necessary. I will tell you that that, uh, that report is absolutely consistent with the testimony of Mr. Kiba from the last meeting in terms of his findings at the site as well. Mr. Kiba is also going to address the issue of uh, dust suppression with the equipment as well in his presentation. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Uh, for the record, uh, Norm Tebow, Kelly Engineering Associates. Uh, here representing uh, Plainfield materials this evening. Um, I'm going to go over the, um, the dust control methods first. This is the simpler of the two things that uh, I'm going to discuss. Um, I did add some notation onto the plans. Um, uh, first of all, a reference to the 2002 Connecticut uh, version of sedimentation control guideline for specific applications. Um, and I've got um, five different methodologies that uh, this, this operation will follow in order to address uh, potential uh, dust issues. Uh, number one, misting. Uh, I, I think as Mr. Colello um, uh, stated at the last meeting, uh, there is a, mi a misting mechanism on the crusher uh, that they, uh, they will be able to uh, utilize. And what this does is it provides a steady stream of, of very light water particles uh, on the crushing operation, uh, thereby suppressing any kind of uh, dust that um, uh, may be generated as part of the crushing operation. Um, almost also might note that uh, one of the things that they try to do um, prior to putting any uh, rock in the crusher is to um, make sure it's clean material that it doesn't have any kind of um, you know, additional uh, dirt clinging to it or, or organics and things of that nature. Those are the things that are kind of prone uh, to dust generation. Um, uh, also, uh, one of the things they can do too, once uh, areas have been stabilized, uh, there are uh, some areas on the site where um, uh, they, they've continued some excavation to get to the final uh, grades that were approved for the site plan. Uh, once those grades have been established and those areas have been stabilized, uh, they will be uh, revegetated, uh, loam seeded, and uh, add some plantings to them as well. So it just um, by virtue of establishing those vegetative surfaces, uh, that in itself 
uh, will assist in uh, keeping dust generation down. Um, another thing they can do uh, when they do hydro seed on this is to provide some sort of attack of fire uh, in the hydro seed process. That's the kind of stuff that typically they uh, uh, you see along the roadways when, when they're doing work along the highways. You see the uh, sort of like the, the green tack of fires on the slopes. Uh, that's the typically a seed and mulch mix uh, with an adhesive to it that adheres to the soil. And uh, as, as um, uh, vegetation is being established, it, uh, it keeps the, um, 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 first of all, it keeps it from eroding, it keeps the seed from being washed away, uh, and it does keep from uh, wind blowing uh, dust uh, from being generated on the slope as well. Uh, uh, watering, uh, which is kind of a typical method for uh, generation on construction sites or any kind of activity uh, where, where there are um, you know, truck traffic and, uh, and uh, excavator traffic going. Uh, the, um, uh, the folks at Plainfield Materials have purchased a watering truck uh, that uh, they will utilize uh, during dry conditions to keep uh, the surfaces uh, moist uh, to keep the dust generation down as vehicles are traversing over them. Uh, finally, um, last but not least, if necessary, uh, they could always put up some barriers and fencing. Uh, there's nothing uh, on the plants right now that actually calls for that, uh, but if uh, if uh, all these other methods weren't weren't working, uh, there's certainly uh, an opportunity to put up some sort of uh, um, fencing, even if it's just silk fencing, to keep some of the low the the, the low dust there. Um, or you could uh, do some chain link fencing with some uh, privacy barriers, and uh, that that will prevent dust altogether. But what that will do is prevent uh, dust from um, moving on to other adjacent properties. Uh, the second item uh, that uh, that we addressed uh, was to have an acoustical study done. So um, I contacted a couple of companies and uh, we ended up um, um, hiring Acoustic Acoustical Technologies Inc. Uh, they are out of uh, Waterford, Connecticut. Um, they've got uh, a lot of experience in this kind of stuff and they work for um, some of their clients include the Boeing Company, uh, the Fisher Island Dot Club, the Naval Overseas Warfare Center, New England Institute of Technology, Raytheon, uh, towns of uh, Darien, East Haven, and Groton, town of Westbrook. Uh, they've done uh, acoustical studies all throughout New England and even uh, as far as south as like Maryland and Virginia. So uh, these guys certainly are experienced uh, and uh, they, they know what they're doing. So. Um, I'm going to read you, first of all, the summary. Uh, it's, it's a rather intensive report. I think there are about 16 pages here, um, a lot of which is, is, is a lot of technical uh, jargon. But uh, the summary that, uh, that he writes uh, right at the beginning of this, and uh, I should also say that uh, the, uh, the gentleman's name who provided this, his name is Carl Cassio, which is C-A-S-C-I-O. Um, and he is a... Um, a uh, certified uh, sound engineer. Uh, this document makes a positive acoustic assessment that should assist in meeting any acoustic noise concerns during the operation of a rock crusher at the Plainfield material site at 113 Plainfield Pike in Plainfield, Connecticut. An acoustic assessment plan was developed and executed to acquire airborne acoustic information useful in explaining and mitigating potential airborne noise issues associated with operation of the rock crusher. The measured acoustic data showed that the airborne noise de de generated by the rock crusher will not significantly impact any of the nearby facilities neighbors. I should note again, as I did uh, last month, that um, due to the lack of uh, any kind of a noise ordinance here in the town of Plainfield, uh, the statutory uh, limitations are uh, accounted for and utilized in this particular study. Uh, the airborne noise levels generated by the rock crusher operating at the Plainfield site were measured during the afternoon of January 24th of 2020. Analysis showed that the rock crusher airborne noise levels were at 100 decibels reference, very near the rock crusher, and then a weighing filter was applied to the levels which dropped to 98 decibels. So an a weighing, what that does is that uh, that actually just filters out uh, the frequencies that the human ear is, uh, is prone to uh, find uh, 
either painful or aggravating or annoying. So uh, the, the equipment that uh, Mr. Cassio has is able to, to filter out some of the frequencies that typically we aren't here. We don't hear, uh, but these meters actually do pick up. Um, airborne noise uh, levels with the rock crusher um, measuring from 5 to 1,091 meters from the rock crusher location at the Plainfield Material site. The airborne noise levels at nearby property lines were measured at levels from 46 to 69 decibels along the nearby Plainfield pipe properties. Residential measurement locations to the south were 748 to 1,091 meters away with airborne noise levels ranging from 32 to 37 decibels. These low noise levels were background limited as no rock crusher noise could be heard this far back. Operation of the rock crusher produces airborne noises below the residential, commercial, and industrial noise limits of the nearby property lines. The highest expected airborne noise level of 69 decibels was at the Rex Project Management, and that would be right at this property line right here which is also another uh, industrial property. Uh, and that was measured at 69 decibels, which is actually one decibel below uh, the, um, the, uh, the limit uh, for an adjacent industrial property. The, um, the commercial property still measured airborne noise, noise levels no higher than 50 decibels. And the nearby residential property lines were at least seven decibels below the daytime residential noise limit of 61 decibels. There should be no acoustic issues present during operation of the many adjacent properties may cause the airborne noise levels to exceed the industrial noise limit to the east and to the south. So obviously the, the crusher really has to stay where it is in order for it to uh, maintain uh, the, the limits that we have here. So, we, we were actually asked to, um, to take some uh, some of the readings uh, to um, some of the, the properties uh, quite distance from the site. I'm looking for the right page here to, to read the results. Okay. Uh, these properties uh, included uh, 79 Meadow Drive, 125 Colonial Road, uh, 230 and 232 Dow Road. Uh, the, um, the levels that were measured at those particular properties ranged from uh, 32.4 to 37.1 decibels. Uh, the residential uh, noise limit is 61 decibels, so we were far below that. Uh, as far as the commercial, uh, the, uh, the commercial properties, uh, the limit would be 66 decibels, and uh, 114, 118 uh, uh, Plainfield Pike were uh, both commercial properties. Uh, they measured it at 49.2 and 50.1. Uh, and then uh, the industrial properties um, at Plainfield Pike itself, right next to the, uh, to the crusher, literally like five meters from it, uh, we had, we had the, uh, the decibel level on of, of anywhere from 97 to 100 decibels, uh, which is what would be expected um, at that machine. Uh, and then um, another thing I think that was pretty interesting is that on, on uh, one, one four, uh, 126 Plainfield Pike and um, 156 Plain, Plainfield Pike. Uh, those are both uh, residential properties. Uh, the background uh, decibel levels were 54.1 and 50.0, uh, but they actually peaked when trucks went by. There was a truck uh, that went by uh, when making measurements at, uh, at 126 Plainfield Pike uh, and 11 uh, peaked to 86.8. And uh, for um, 156 Plainfield Pike, uh, when a car went by, the decibel level peaked to 76.1. So I, I think the report is uh, pretty conclusive in that um, uh, traffic that actually travels on that roadway um, actually generates higher decibel levels than what would be anticipated uh, from the rock crushing operation itself. Um, and the report goes on to explain all the equipment uh, that was used and so forth. Um, there's a pretty extensive explanation of the type of equipment that he used there. Um, obviously, a lot more, um, a lot more complicated uh, than what I use. My little handheld. Um, he had uh, a number of microphones set up. He did calibrate um, every machine um, before and afterwards uh, to make sure that um, 
uh, the machines were calibrated properly. Um, uh, there were a number of recorders that he used, um, brought it back to his lab, and even for the recorders, he did some analysis uh, with some of the laboratory equipment he had. So um, quite sophisticated uh, in comparison, but generally around the same around the same types of readings that I was getting, uh, with just a, a lot more detail associated with it. I, I haven't submitted a copy to Brian, but I'd be happy to submit it all. And this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone in the audience with a comment or question on this application, if you could stand up, state your name and your comment. John Colossus, 126, 23 Pike. Uh, on the 24th, that was Friday. What location on 126 were they taking the reading at? Um, right in front of your driveway. Right in front of your driveway? Yes. Were they like closer to the house because at the distance, you know, because it opens up, it gets louder. I would have the whole time and it was right in front of the driveway. You know, it would definitely go lower. I Can you say your name for the record, please? Ernest Blow, the applicant. Um, that we were right there as the vehicle went by, I see it ramped up to 60, went right back down to the 30s, which is only half the. Okay, but I mean, how long have you guys run the pressure for? Just at one time last November, you guys run it at I had to turn the TV up and just started it. Right. We, we ran that crusher for at least four and a half hours for the whole test. And we went to Dow Road and heard chirping would make the loudest noise over there. The, uh, the hammer will make a little, you could not even hear it on Dow Road at all. You couldn't get any readings. So I'm not sure of how. What did you say about Dow Road now? Um, they were down like 30. 37 to 38. Two sections on the road. Right. The you main property on behind that 100 and something acres that would be Correct. the closest point. Correct. Yeah. Get any they were, I think, 30, 34 or 37 decibels were with the reads that we're getting there. And the, the Merrill, the old uh, Appalachian property, that ramped up to like 48 because it was more of the, the open in front of the, the Appalachian. So it was an open area, like you've got to look at the trees. That ramped up to like 40 something, which, you know, it's based on a I guess it's 60 something, I believe. So yeah. it's well below. Jamie Clark, 107, Plainfield Light. Um, they're right behind my house, and I've heard it before. It's not as loud as people are saying it is. You know, it's a rock crusher. You get it in, you know? But I have no problem with it. It's not loud. It doesn't disturb me. And like I said, it's like, right on the other side of that hill, I can't really hear it. I have no problem. I, I support them with it. Anyone else for this application? My name is Cal, 506 Norwich Road. I've got a front of John Plainfield Pipe as well. And uh, I've seen the facility, and I'm impressed by it. I think it's something that we need in this area. We need jobs, we need materials, we need tax base, um, so I just wanted to say I'm in favor of the application. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else comment or question from the public? Any comments or questions from staff or members? Okay. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion on the public hearing. A motion for the public hearing. Okay. I have a motion by Sean and a second by Kathy. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Item D, Z 2019-1689 of Melissa Colley, requesting a special permit for a 20 by 24 addition to existing barn on property located at 114 Goshen Road, Musa, map 31, lot 61, lot 39, RA60 zoning district. Do we have someone to speak for the applicant? Thank you. 
and it meets all the setbacks? It does, it's in the center of the property. And this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone here with a comment or question on this application, if you could state your name and your comment. All right, hearing none for the public. Are there any other comments or questions from staff or board members? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion on the public hearing. Motion by Sean to close. Second by Roz, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Public hearing is closed. We'll address it under old business. Uh, moving on to item E. Z 2020-1701, Sammy P. Inc. requesting a special permit for earth products excavation and processing on the westerly portion of the parcel on property located on Millbrook Road, Plainfield, Map 10, Lot 17, Lot 5, Industrial 1 Zoning District. For the record, John Felicia Boundaries LLC representing Sandy PD. Also with me this evening is David Kay, the project engineer from our office. Uh, this application was submitted to the commission last month and scheduled for public hearing this evening. Uh, it was on the agenda for the April, I'm sorry, the January 21st meeting of the Inland Mountains Commission. The Inland Mountains Commission received it that evening. Uh, that was their first look at the application. They will not be able to act on it until January 18th. Uh, and we are on that agenda. Um, with that being said, I'll be brief because I know you need to maintain the hearing open for the wetlands decision. Um, certified mail notices <coughs> are provided in accordance with the regulations and the receipts provided to the zoning enforcement officer. They also have the green cards that have been received to date so far, and I'd like to submit those. Uh, the application has been reviewed by town staff and it's also been reviewed by CME, your town's consulting engineer. Uh, this application is very similar in nature to the application that you received the easterly part of this property um, in terms of its operations, the excavation of earth products and the processing thereof. This project is located west of the project that you've already um, acted on the crew, and it's located east of Millbrook Road, uh, southerly of the Gluck property, which is on the northerly boundary of the subject pro property. This proposal is to remove 165,000 cubic yards of earth products over 9.2 area acre of the 52-acre parcel. Uh, it is going to be done in three phases. Um, each phase will be under five acres in size, and access will be directly from Millbrook Road. Aggregate or trucks leaving the site will be extended or will be proceeding eastly through 12 and on to their final destination for the state road system. As with the prior application, we conducted groundwater monitoring in this portion of the property since November. Um, we have test holes of monitoring wells in a couple of locations on the site. And similarly to the previous project, this site had wetland locations on three sides of it um, so that we're able to use, utilize those elevations along with the toilet, soil testing that we've done and the monitoring wells have been installed to ensure that we're nowhere near the water table with the floor of the excavation. Similarly, we're approximately 12 to 15 feet above the water table um, as we were on the adjacent part of the property. The property is in the eye zone, and there is a um, there's a desire to reuse the property when we're done. We're not looking to just create a big hole in the ground, obviously, and so therefore we've been taking care and establishing the final floor grades to make usable space um, when the property is the excavation of the property is completed. We've maintained three to one slopes um, along all of the boundaries of the property um, that we will be excavating adjacent to. We maintain the setbacks, required setbacks for excavation, for equipment, for storage, for processing, um, consistent with the prior plan. Uh, and again, the groundwater monitoring is shown on sheet number three of the plan set. There are center traps, temporary center traps proposed in each of the phases that will be later converted to permanent uh, water quality basins, and those are located within each phase of the operation as well. We did receive comments from CME regarding their review of the project. Um, they noted that the waiver was requested as was uh, consistent with the previous application in terms of groundwater monitoring. We've taken the same approach to groundwater monitoring in this case and feel that we have adequate uh, determination of the groundwater. The comments received from CME were fairly minor in nature. <coughs> there were a couple of minor adjustments to the stormwater report that were requested. Those adjustments have been made and resubmitted to CME and to town staff. And there was also the 
comment that it may be added at the entrance drive, and we have done so um, in accordance with their comments. Other than that, I don't have anything else to add at this time unless anybody has questions. And like I said, we are waiting on the this week. Okay. So this is a public hearing which will be held open to next month, um, given more information is needed. But if there's anyone in the audience with a comment or question, you can address that tonight. Uh, my name is Don Kenneth. I work for the Province of Mr. Rail, uh, Genesee, Wyoming Company. Uh, we did have some communications with the uh, excavating company that uh, they communicate with us when they're excavating close excavated <coughs> railroad tracks, it's 40 mile an hour railroad tracks, and also with uh, concerns about the wetlands and diverting the water running towards the uh, railroad right away. Yeah, please. Sure. Um, this project is actually on the westward part of the property. It's uh, in excess of a thousand feet from the railroad. There is no opportunity for runoff in that direction. The runoff is contained within the site. So in terms of fun water, it's not an issue. And again, we're in excess of 1,000 feet from the railroad uh, with this project. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this application? What will be some potential uses of this property? Uh, I can't give you an exact use of the property. It's located in the I-1, in the I-1 zone district. Um, so all of the industrial uses that are permitted under the regulations and or by special permit would be potential uses for the property, likely manufacturing. Okay, any others? All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to continue to march. A motion by Sean, a second by Jared. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Public hearings continue to march. Moving on to the regular meeting, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, additions and corrections to the agenda. We do have two items to add. Uh, for new business, um, adding item B, Z2020-1713 of Summertime Properties, requesting a map amendment of 1832 Pick Road from RA60 to RA30. And then also adding item C, Z2020-1715, North End Automotive, requesting a site plan review for an 8,400 square foot building for automotive sales and repair on Norwich Road, map 15, block 75, lot 3A. So I'll entertain a motion to add those under new business. I have a motion, do I have a second? I have a second by Jared, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, added under new business, items B and C. Um, citizen participation. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board if you have a question that is not related to one of the public hearings. Okay, moving on. Unfinished old business. Um, item A, Z2019-1620 was withdrawn. Um, item B, Z2019-1674, continuation of Whitney Easton. Requesting special permit for an accessory apartment on property located at 135 School Street, Central Village, Map 1CB, Block 86, Lot 21, C2 Zoning District. So we had been waiting for the parking plan, which was submitted and approved by Ryan. Um, are there any items for discussion on this application? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion on the application. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So there was a suggested condition of approval that occupants of the apartments and visitors shall park in the designated areas. Okay, I have a motion to approve with condition. Second by Raz, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Application is approved with condition. Item C, Z2019-1681, continuation of plain field materials, LLC, requesting a special permit for a gravel screening, processing, and crushing on property located at 113 Plainfield Pike Plainfield, map 17, block 36, lot 68 and 68A, industrial one zoning district. And I'm just gonna make a correction to that. 
because it's only the addition of stone crushing. Am I right, Brian? I'm sorry, I was doing something else. What was the question? On the plain fill materials application, it's only the addition of stone crushing because the other uses have already been approved. Yes. So what that should say is requesting special permit for the addition of stone crushing on the previously approved application. Hey, Ryan, the building never got talked about. Is that okay? Um, that was a new thing on the plan as well. It's always on the plan. But the application was to add the use of stone crushing. Right, they also added uh, an addition to the building. That was, the and that was discussed in one of the prior years. Do you have that? Yep. He's going to give us the map to look at. requests for waiver. Mm -hmm. um, do those waivers go with the properties or the owners or the use? It goes with the property. So the second waiver um, indicates a uh, property is under contract, so they do not own that. Is that could I have a point of clarification on the um, where it says an industrial parcel with legally non-conforming residents, which is under contract to be purchased. Have you purchased that property yet? No. Okay. I would be very hesitant to offer a waiver on a property that's not owned by the applicant. So, well, I don't know. So, I would just make that point clear. Um, the other request for waiver was for the crushing screening to be located closer than 100 feet from the northern boundary, which is industrial land owned by the applicant and part of the application. Um, westerly boundary, which is industrial land also owned by the applicant. Um, so there were two requests for waiver, both of which would have to be motioned on um, prior to the determination on the rest of the applicant. So additional items on discussion. <coughs> so we had the five items for the dust control. Um, they had the additional independent acoustic study in addition to what the applicants had previously done. And then there's also the suggested hours of um, operation. So the current hours of operation of the 2018 approval was Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. No activity on Sundays or holidays. Um, for a point of discussion, I would consider that the addition of stone crushing is a, a noisier operation and that perhaps to balance out the needs of the residents and the business that the 7 a.m. start time would not be feasible. Um, so I would suggest later in the morning, such as 9 o'clock, for the crushing, because the previous hours are already approved. So it wouldn't be, um, can't revise what's been previously approved. We can only condition what is being asked to be added, is my understanding. Would you agree, Ryan? Okay. Okay. All right, so you need a, you need a motion for the waiver. So first we have to decide the waiver requests, and then um, we we'll go from there. Now, Ryan, just another point of clarification. If the second waiver is denied, then that means that the proposed location of the building would have to be revised as well. So we would need a revised site plan. Am I correct on that? So, okay. what is the issue 
So there's two waivers being requested. The second waiver is requesting to be closer to a property line for a parcel that the applicant does not own. That is actually for the um, 41 by 80 building addition. It's actually for a gravel operation, which is not. So it's, it is a stone crusher, but it's a processing operation. It's not for a gravel operation, so I'm not sure that applies. The second waiver request right. is asking for the building addition to be located closer. Right. So if, if they are going to be having a um, gravel operation, uh, and the building will be for the gravel operation, However, this is not a gravel operation. This is a industrial site. So why is the waiver being requested? Could the applicant clarify why this waiver was requested? In excess of caution. Uh, but I, I tend to agree with Brian's analysis. Mm -hmm. So are you withdrawing the request of that waiver? I don't think you have to happen. Other items for discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve waiver 12.32.7A. Um, that's the pressure screen equipment uh, closer than 100 feet from the boundary, which the applicant owns the boundaries, the loving properties. Okay, so I have a motion to approve the first waiver request. Do I have a second? Okay. I have a second by Kathy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay. um, so the discussion, it appears that the second waiver um, may not be applicable. Uh -huh. But given it was made in our abundance of caution, would it be best to... I would just say, if you are in agreement that it's not required, just state that it's, it's not required and do not have to. And is that the opinion of the board? I don't know if it's required or not, but at this point, at this point, I'm not ready to act on it. As far as the problem with denying it right now. Well, if you deny the request, if you deny the request for waiver, you're kind of acknowledging that it is required and you're not going to allow it. So state that it's not required and you don't act on it. I think that would save us from So then in the event it's discovered later that it is required, the applicant would have to come back before the board and request a waiver at that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So unnecessary on the second waiver. And a motion on the application. I'll make a motion to approve application C 2019-1681 with the adjustment to the hours of operation for the crushing operation opening from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday and no Saturdays for the crushing only. Okay. Um, there's also um, the suggested condition that the operation shall not differ from the 2018 approval with the exception that stone crushing be added. And then the printed uh, plans must be printed on Mylar <coughs> with the town clerk. Yes, I'll make that motion. Okay, so I have the motion with the three conditions, the hours of operation, um, the only exception being the change to the stone crushing added to the previously approved, and then the plans being printed do I have a second on that motion? Second. I have a second by Roz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, application is approved with those conditions. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving on to item D, Z, 2019-1689 of Melissa Colley, requesting a special permit for a 20 by 24 addition to existing barn on property located at 114 Goshen Road, Musa, map 31, block 61, lot 39, RA 60 zoning district. Any items for discussion on this application? I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? 
Second by Kathy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Application is approved. Um, item E, the 2020-1701 was continued to mark. Moving on to new business. Item A, Z. She submitted a fee of six hundred ten dollars, and the fee was supposed to be four sixty. So we have to vote to refund one hundred fifty dollars. Oh, okay. I'll make a motion to approve the refund of the over and second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Marianne. I'm sure she appreciates it too. All right. Item A, Z 2020 1707 of Garrett Holmes LLC requesting site plan review for a 9,100 square foot retail building with 46 parking spaces, concrete walkways, dumpster pad, unloading area, stormwater management system, site lighting, utilities, and landscaping on property located at 7 Musa Pond Road, Warregan, Map 13, Block 85, Lot 7, and 7A C1 Zoning District. Uh, 
um, that are directed to swales um, in a detention basin in the rear and then discharging to the rear of the parcel. The previous uh, prior, as, we, as it is today, there's existing drainage lines that kind of cut through the building. Uh, we're looking to relocate that so the building can go in this place. So these two areas here and this one here are rerouting the DOT drainage uh, around the building with water quality swales. So what this does is this provides water quality. This is 80% TSS removal, which is required by the state. TSS stands for the total suspended solids. Uh, we also match drainage points, so everything before was drained at this point, but we're continuing to do that here. And with the addition of the structures and the basin, we're mitigating peak flows, so many of the downstream waters aren't going to get um, a gush of water that wasn't previously going in the direction. Uh, in terms of uh, proposed utilities in the building, everything's available either on site or in the street, so that's uh, sanitary sewer, gas, telephone, and water. Um, in terms of landscaping, we have a variety of uh, trees and shrubs along the frontage of the parcel and the parking lot. Uh, and also inside some of the interior islands. Uh, we also are requesting a 25, uh, 25 foot landscape buffer waiver. Uh, instead, we're proposing a uh, six foot high solid vinyl fence along the perimeter on both of these sides to uh, the neighboring houses. Um, in addition to what you see in the plan here, we do also have an erosion identification control plan um, for during construction before the center stabilized. So that's fixed things like construction entrance. Silk sacks, silk fence, uh, erosion control blankets, things of that nature. Um, in addition to that, we also provide a photometric plan. Um, it has LED um, full, uh, full color dark stack compliant fixtures, uh, provide obviously the safety and security of um, employees and patrons. That's kind of a quick overview of the site. Um, Doug here can show you the architect that proposed, unless you guys have any questions. Where exactly is the area you're asking for the waiver and vegetated buffer, and how far does it extend? Right, so the 25 foot vegetated buffer is required along this boundary here. Um, because of the um, reconfiguration of the DOT piping that kind of crisscrossed this property when it used to be part of the road, um, we're proposing both these water quality swales along the perimeter to match the drainage points. And instead of planting that basin that's going to go up and down, would really provide a lot of I guess, screening to the adjacent, proposing this six foot solid fence along this entire border. Okay. So it would go along the entire borders on both of those sides? Both of those sides, correct. Okay. And it wouldn't interfere with any sight lines or anything like that. So what will be maintained along Usupon Road? Usupon Road right now um, is just a, uh, a grass swale that is, you know, we're, we're about to be 10 feet lower than the Sipon Road, so we're kind of down in the bank. Um, so I guess half, half of the building would be kind of sheltered because we're actually going to need a hole from here to the Sipon Road and then also across the street. Okay. And then on the Route 12 side, that'll just be seated? Yep, so we have a uh, seat along the front here in the green. Obviously, this, this shirt here, that's uh, just the aerial, that's the DMT right away. We're not supposed to touch anything there. Uh, there's an existing tree in the front here that we're proposing to remain. So we're adding uh, a tree. A tree
least lines up with one. So orientation-wise, it lines up with the United Services driveway. Correct. Okay, so it's not lined up um, with Shepherd Hill Road. That's further down. Further down. Yeah. Okay. My name is Doug Rennie. I'm the Department of BKA Architects for the Architect and Record on the Project. I just want to give you a architecture network and go over that. To start along here on Putnam Road, this is the entry space. Basically, it is a, um, it's got a focal point of sliding doors, which is a dark bronze, adorned by a, uh, a gable style uh, covered canopy that's going to double as a signage for the tenant and the tournament, as well as the traditional. Uh, we have windows flanking on either side of the entry. Uh, they are light gray spandle. Uh, because it's going to be a retail tenant, they don't really uh, know what their product is going to be, so they're going to be opaque. <coughs> you can't see the side, and they're more of a decoration. We have a red brick base and a light gray clapboard uh, adorned by a vertical and a horizontal white trim. We're going to use a, a cementitious uh, product called Hardywood. It uh, almost looks like a wood type of product as a grain and like that but it's not so it's a little bit more durable. Uh, on the two sides, we're going to start with some ponder up. This is actually the side where the egress is, shown by the side. Uh, it also shows the, you know, the light red brick uh, covering the side of the house. And uh, it's going to have a horizontal uh, uh, aluminum wood trim, depending on the bent of the brick between the two here and that. It's a two tone gray palette, uh, light gray in the front and uh, dark gray on the two sides, metal panel. And the side where the uh, logo is going to be is pretty much similar to this one, except that the other side of the wood and more lighting, especially this first one over there. Uh, this is the mirror. Uh, pretty much it's going to have all the colors that put up all the green on it. Uh, the roof pitches from high to low to the rear. And it's a one single gutter. Correct. 
Correct. We have submitted to them. Uh, we typically submit to them when we submit to the towns. Uh, they like to obviously see your approvals as well. Uh, we've had some discussion with them. Um, uh, uh, it's I've obviously forwarded along any approvals that we did receive. Uh, I don't see any uh, pending issues with what we have in both the same right away. And were all the revisions discussed with staff submitted? Uh, yes. Yes, you were. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions from staff? Any other comments or questions from board members? <coughs> so there are suggestions of approval. Um, DOT approval is required prior to issuing a zoning permit for construction. Plans are to be printed to Mylar and must be recorded in the town clerk's office after commission signature prior to receiving a zoning permit. And it was approved by Indian 12 months. I make a motion to approve this application for the commission of this case. I have to approve Yep. So I have a motion to approve with the conditions as read into the record. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Roz. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Application is approved. Item B. Z2020-1713 of Summertime Properties requesting a map amendment of 1832 Pickett Road from RA60 to RA30, and this does require a public hearing. I have a motion to schedule a public hearing in March. Do I have a second? Yes. Second by Roz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Public hearing is scheduled for our next meeting in March. I believe it's March 10th, 7 o'clock. Um, item C, Z2020-1715 of North End Automotive requesting site plan review for an 8,400 square foot building for automotive sales and repair on Norwich Road, map 15, lot 75, lot 3A. Is there anyone to speak for the applicant? Okay. So no action to be made. Uh, continue to the next meeting. I'll entertain a motion on that. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Jerry. All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Continue to March. Looking at the minutes from the January 14th meeting, did anyone have any modifications or changes to the minutes? Okay. All right, hearing no changes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I have a motion by Roz. Second by Kathy, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Application, uh, not application, minutes are approved. Um, correspondence, so I was given the Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies. Um, there is a annual um, conference in March and if anyone is interested in that, we do have a small um, budget for such items. So if anyone's interested in that, um, Marianne and Ryan will have the um, registration forms. And then there's also a um, length of service award nomination if there was anyone that we wanted to nominate for that. We had actually, John Meyer had gotten that in the past. And was there any other correspondence? There was no. None. All right. Uh, moving on to other. Uh, release of construction bonds for Dollar General on property located at 615 Norwich Road, Plainfield, Map 2P, Lock 21, Lock 4. So I'm assuming this is because of all the construction is done. Is that right, Ryan? Yes. The commission required a $15,000 bond for inspection of the site work. Um, drainage because it would tie into the town stormwater drainage and also um, improvements to uh, 7th Street, which was needed in order to tie into our storm drainage. Um, we only utilized $990 of that money, and so we have to return $14,010. Okay. So hearing no other discussion on it, I'll entertain a motion to release the remaining $14,010. No I have a motion by Ross. Second by Sean. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And that will be released. Um, report from Zoning Enforcement. I almost have one that's one. Just two ones in a row. Pending. 
A uh, report from planning and zoning. I just wanted to add uh, one thing to my written report. Um, one of the requirements for compliance with the MS4 permit is field locating and mapping stormwater outfalls in town. Um, our engineer has been working on the MS4 project for since we got notified that Plainfield was roped in. Um, this would be a potentially extremely costly thing for the engineers to undertake. So I reached out to Chris Big Good up at the high school to see if they possibly have GPS equipment and if it's something that he thought the students might be interested in taking on as a project. Our engineer and myself met with Principal Big Good last week and he said yes indeed they do have the equipment and it would be a wonderful project for the engineering students and for the environmental science students. So they're going to begin that in the spring. It will probably carry over to the fall because there's a lot to do. Um, they're going to start with uh, town-owned properties and I'm meeting with the engineer tomorrow to go over locations of those properties to basically prioritize where they want to hit first. And on the, the low side, this is saving the town like $73,000, $75,000 on the low side. And then our engineer will be overseeing the students. The but quality control. Yeah, exactly. So will he be signing off on it in the end? I'm sorry? Will he be signing off on it in the end? Yeah. And, and what about liabilities or problems possibly if somebody get hurt on the things or anything like that? That's covered by the schools. Right. Thank you everybody and thank you for sticking to me.